Good morning. Today I'm talking about salt marshes, um, what they are and how they are structured. So salt marshes um, are pretty common here in the Bay Area. Salt marshes are areas that are regularly flooded by salt water. Um, so we're not talking like freshwater lakes and streams and stuff like that. And they get flooded and drained pretty much daily by the tides. Obviously the lower parts of the marsh down here near the water are going to get flooded more and the, the parts further up the marsh are going to get flooded less because they're higher up um, so they're not as likely to flood as the areas that are right near the water. Creatures that live here are adapted for this environment. They actually rely on this environment and they can handle these changing conditions because of their adaptations. Okay, uh, let's look at some of the different parts of the marsh. So the first part here I'm talking about is the low marsh. This is the part that is right next to the water. Um, most of the marsh is made up of this thick mud layer as things de die and decay and kind of build up on top of each other. You see a lot of that here in the low marsh. And the low marsh is often or regularly submerged below the water. And you have grasses. There's a lot of grasses in the marsh. This is a good example where this grass, you can see all these crystals on it. Uh, so it has developed a way of taking the salt water and pushing out the salt through the leaves of this plant. So it absorbs uh, water just like any other, um, any other plant, but it has to get rid of that excess salt. And this is just one example. So these grasses have all these salt crystals sitting on the outside of them that have been expelled from the plant. Okay, going up a little bit further, we get into the high marsh. Now the high marsh still gets flooded um, and you'll see a lot of waterways. It's not flooded as often as the low marsh, but you create these, these kind of channels as the water then drains back out to the, to the ocean. Um, there's a little bit more land, a little bit more dry places, and it's um, uh, all these channels they provide habitat for fish and invertebrates. And they provide nurseries for these fish and invertebrates. So this is where the young can go. And because there's so much, um, so many roots, so much mud, so many little nooks and crannies, they're safer in here. Uh, this creature here is a, salt marsh harvest mouse that we have here in the Bay Area. It's uniquely adapted to the high marsh. It does not burrow. It can't burrow. I mean, it's that's all mud. Um, so it would be pointless to try and burrow because the burrow every day would get flooded. So what it does is it lives among these grasses. And it'll have, it'll take, it'll spend its whole life cycle from birth to death living amongst these grasses down near the bottoms of the grasses and the roots and everything like that. But having its burrow or shelter be just at the base of those grasses. And then finally, we have the salt marsh boundary. So this is the furthest up that uh, furthest away from the water that the marsh gets. 
Um, it still will get flooded, but rarely. Usually only during the highest tides either of the month or even the highest tides of the year. So not often, but it does sometimes happen. And you see this transition from grasses into trees and shrubs. Um, uh, it starts to look like a regular forest as you pull out of the marsh. These areas, the marsh in general, the salt marsh in general, but especially these high marsh and the, uh, the boundary, they provide excellent protection for coastal communities because they're really good at absorbing storm surge. So when you have big storms, which we don't often get out here in the Bay Area, but it happens a lot on the East Coast and the South, the surge from storms can be lessened by these marshes. Um, they can take a lot of the energy out of the storm surge. And without these, the storm surge will just come in, destroy the coastal communities. But with the marsh, it slows it all down. It takes a lot of the energy out and protects these communities. Okay, thank you very much.